What's going on? I'm Skyland Shore with Free MMO Station, and today I'm going to give you my first impression look at a new free-to-play racing game called Win Cars Racer. FreeMMOStation.com So what is Win Cars Racer? Well, Win Cars Racer is really trying to uh, hit that nostalgic sweet spot. It's actually very reminiscent of a lot of arcade games, or the arcade racing games specifically. So this is an arcade racer. There are some really goofy physics. It's not realistic in the least. It's got power-ups, and it's got some goofy, crazy maps, really reminiscent of, like, USA Racing or earlier Mario Karts, kind of. You know, it's got that whole, like, goofy cartoon thing going on. Um, but aesthetically, graphically, it looks like it belongs in an arcade like 10 years ago no 20 years ago uh, it just looks very dated and that kind of can actually be a good thing as we saw with like pixel art and a lot of these upcoming games that are uh, there's actually a lot of racing games in this genre this arcade racing genre that are coming out and a lot of people are just eating that up however win cars racer i don't think is going to be one of the good ones for a number of reasons but first and foremost i want to say that yes it does at least fill the niche that it's aiming to fill it does feel like an arcade racer like I guess it works it's functional sort of in a way but there's a lot of things that just really bog it down and you can obviously see the immaturity of these game developers for one the unity engine isn't running great here yes it's, it is using the unity engine which is normally good for browser based games and and basically, it's just a very flexible and easy to use engine. However, unless you are kind of like a master of the engine, it tends to not run that well. Now, I'm coming, this is coming from first hand experience. So, while you're watching this, if you see like some choppiness, that's not the video editor, guys. The game just honestly will go from 60 FPS, which it looks locked at, uh, and then it just drops and chops in like places where it really shouldn't because the game is incredibly bare bones. There's not much detail and animations and such. So, it just, it doesn't warrant that frame droppage, and you really don't want that in a racing game. Racing inherently is competitive, especially since this is a multiplayer racing game. So any sort of frame droppage is just balls, man. All right, but let's move on to probably the next most important aspect to why I think this game will fail. And it, it, I really hate this. I think everybody, like the, the community and a lot of developers even, are growing to understand that this is a bad practice. And that is purchasable maps. Purchasable, unlockable maps is bad. That is, you don't know. Don't know. No. Don't do that. Unless it's a single player DLC that comes with actual true content, you do not want to separate your player base. You don't do that. You, that's not a thing that you do anymore in games. Every single time that you attempt to do this, you're separating the player base. And in a multiplayer only game or multiplayer focused game, you are basically ruining your community. You are either forcing people to buy every single map to be competitive, to play with the vast majority of players, or, or like everyone is just floundering around trying to find a game. You're not going to find any games whatsoever and actually that's kind of the case here. Plus, the game has a very low population because they didn't really invite anybody into the beta, so yeah, I actually did not get to play one single full game with any person. So yeah, you can you can unlock and buy maps in this game, and I don't agree with that. You can also unlock and purchase racers and cars and skins, but the truth is, is I think you should only be able to unlock skins. Uh, I don't really enjoy grinding, getting different characters. I like competitiveness, so anytime that I can mention it, I will, though I will agree that in a lot of free-to-play games, they do have unlock and progression systems that are technically pay to win as you are leveling through the game. So I understand that, but the circumstances thing the map thing I can't let that slide you have to purchase maps in order to unlock them and play with people that have those maps nope I don't think so also the game doesn't look that great in my opinion I mean if, if we just go to just like aesthetics you know the selling points sure I guess there's some cool post-processing that makes visual stills look good but not only is the frame rate in the engine not very like up to par which of course like, it could be better optimized I guess but you know then this is the first impression I'm just telling you guys anyways graphically as well it's a little bit lackluster animations are super corny and boring and really amateur immature and the uh, overall like the textures the color the menus, the UI, the overall user experience just seems really rough. It kind of like scratches my eyeballs, you know, it's got like rough textures, it's got kind of harsh colors, and for such a cartoon and, and potentially colorful game, it's actually not that colorful. I mean, in-game, uh, I don't know, it's, it's okay, you know, it's kind of uproarious, it's silly. I mean, you got maps with fucking dinosaurs, and you do have some really crazy uh, locales, but I don't think that they're really as colorful or have as much character as they could. I mean, Mario 64 
64, and it is an older dated game, Racing USA as well, but those games have like, even though they are lesser quality games, you know, lower polygon count, potentially rougher uh, textures with Racing USA, still they have like these really big, epic, like fucking visuals, like it's just, it's ridiculous and crazy. And while this game tries to emulate that, I don't think that it quite reaches that sort of like standard, which was set so long ago. So it's kind of uh, surprising that it, they were able to nail it down here. But enough of the negatives, let's talk about some cool stuff about Wing Cars Racer. So what they tried to do with the game mechanically is that they wanted to take like kind of like a MOBA aspect to the game. Instead of just having random power-ups like in Mario Kart, they wanted to do power-ups and there are like things you can pick up in the map, but everybody has three abilities without use cooldowns and you can utilize these and you can pick between a different car which has lots of different stats and a racer which also has his own unique stats. So you can kind of mix and match. Depending on what type of circuit you are on, you might want to drive a certain way with a peculiar sort of like skill set. Uh, it, it's just, I don't know, there's a little bit of customization there and I do, I appreciate that. I think that's really good. The picking and choosing is really fun. I, that's why I like the MOBA Dragons and Titans, for instance. So putting that into a racing game is a really interesting idea. I think that's a cool thing. However, I feel like everything else about the game really holds it down. The core concept, brilliant. And I do think that this genre of game is sort of resurging in popularity. I mean, nostalgia is a hell of a drug, right? So we gotta have our nostalgia goggles on. I, I did, I put my my nostalgia goggles on, my Ridge Racer, Racing USA, Mario Kart experience. I came into this game really excited, and I like the skins, I like the concept and everything, and you know, even though the physics are wonky and stupid, so were like all these other games, so it's fine, it's fine. But I just feel like there's such a lack of polish and such a lack of expertise or true originality that I can't really give it flying colors, okay? <laughs> And uh, I guess right here, I'll just kind of nitpick a little bit. I think the game is cool, so I want to nitpick and, you know, help it kind of progress. So one thing that I was a little bit confused about is I had my keyboard and mouse plugged in and the controls that I thought would work with the keyboard and mouse weren't default, like W wasn't to move or anything. I couldn't control with the mouse. I couldn't actually control at all. I was pressing all sorts of keys. I don't even know if there is keyboard and mouse control. So then I had to plug in a controller, uh, which of course, racing games are always better with a controller, but I feel like there should at least be like options. Like some people can actually drive with a mouse and keyboard or they, they hotkey it correctly to the mouse for steering and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit awkward uh, that I had to go and use a controller. Like some people don't have controllers. I don't know. I just feel like you should have multiple inputs and most games do even if it's not optimum. So I'm just saying that's one little nitpick. And it's like those sort of things, you know, these sort of things that other like more established companies and developers would put into their games. Like that's not in this game. Things that you sort of take for granted in like more polished games, you're definitely going to notice when you jump into Win Cars Racer. You're going to be like, oh, it doesn't have this. It doesn't have that. There's like the game just feels like lacking in so many small little sectors that it becomes a huge nagging issue as you're playing the game. It just feels very uncomfortable. Uh, but lastly, lastly, let's talk about the overall design of the circuits of the maps because this is probably something that is actually really important in a lot of racing games, like how the maps unfold, and that kind of determines a lot of gameplay. So the maps are kind of reminiscent of really and the maps are really reminiscent of like mobile games. Like if you ever played a mobile racer, you know how small those circuits are. And you know, actually this game looks like it probably belongs on tablet. You know, in fact, if this game was a tablet racer, I would probably kind of let a lot of things slide. I really would. But because it is a Windows racer, I expected so much more, right? Uh, but like the, the maps are really short. There's not too much going on. The textures aren't great, as I mentioned over and over again. But I just want to reiterate that a lot of the game just doesn't look as good as it could on all Macs. And at the same time, there's going to be frame hits. And it's just not worthwhile overall graphically. And it doesn't have the art style to kind of br bring it up. You know, like Team Fortress 2 is not the most great. It's not Crisis 3, but Team Fortress still still looks more unique. As you can see from our new top 10 that we just did, BTW, if you guys want to watch that. That. Most unique car styles. Anyways, the circuits are not designed professionally. Like, there's a lot of hazards in the maps that you just really can't see coming the first time you play it. You want a map to be able to be intuitive, so like, even if you can't make that right turn, you at least know that there's a right turn coming up. There's so many areas where there's just like a pitfall, and you can barely tell like what, what's going on there. Like, are we supposed to jump over it? Are we supposed to curve around it? And you don't know until you fall into the pitfall. That's not the kind of design you want in a racing game. It needs to be intuitive, and then like, there's 
there's not any like super duper shortcuts. Now there is a little bit of like multi layering kind of going on. There are some sort of shorter areas and, and sort of like ways that you can get up and over traffic or something like that. But overall the game design, the actual circuit design is not super duper amazing crazy making me bonkers in love with it it's just like usual i don't know i would expect it in a mobile game that's all i'm saying they're short they're not very wide there's not too much depth they're not horrible but they're not brilliant that's all i'm saying yeah, but that's kind of the whole story of the game, really, is that it had this pretty good idea. It was a novel idea in the sense that they wanted to take some older titles, you know, kind of be reminiscent of that, a little bit nostalgic. Take that and bring it up to, like, modern day status, put, slap a free-to-play tag on it, make it available for everyone. It's supposed to be all fun and silly and awesome, but in the end, it just the execution itself was just very usual and, frankly, in my opinion, kind of lazy. So that was my opinion on the game. This is the first impressions and a little preview. Hopefully you guys have fun with the game if you do jump into it and hopefully you had fun with the video. I had fun making it. I'm Skyline Shore with Free MMO Station. Go to my personal channel if you like my voice. And remember, Free MMO Station. We pretty much check out every single free to play multiplayer game. So like and subscribe if you want to see the new upcoming stuffs. And until next time.